गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज टुडे इज डिसम्बर फिफ्थ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दिस इज आवर regular saturday morning yoga therapy class today's topic is yoga therapy a breath based asanas the whole yoga therapy is based on relaxation response and parasympathetic activation it is a philosophy which has 196 sutras of which 193 are about controlling your mind and eight limbs of practices of which we primarily use three limbs asana pranayama and meditation the therapeutic effect is the meditation we call meditation is the medication but the asanas prepare your body for a completely effortless relaxed pranayama pranayama is a voluntary regulated breathing it is really not a breathing exercise it is a regulated breathing which quite stun your mind you enters into a steps fifth sixth and seventh limb of yoga now today i'll demonstrate how you use the asanas along with your breath like a breath based asanas which is primarily therapeutic outcome of yoga therapy as you all know the yoga therapy is the most effective in the clinical conditions the first condition most effective is your chronic low back pain there is no other treatment even with all the randomized control study showed there is no other better treatment that chronic low back pain yoga therapy is very effective in a cancer therapy to elevate all the symptoms of cancer and also to cause a genetic suppression of oncogenes that means the expression of the gene which is causing cancer is being suppressed so the primary prevention like a person or a family who had a cancer do not get a cancer secondary prevention like the people who have a cancer they have a usual treatment surgery chemotherapy radiation then they incorporate yoga therapy they had a secondary prevention that means they really do not develop any recurrence of the cancer tertiary prevention is preventing the complications of a disease like say for people with diabetes the diabetes have a complication like diabetes nephropathy kidney problem diabetic uh, cardiovascular problem uh, diabetic ketoacidosis diabetic retinopathy in the eyes uh, this tertiary <coughs> prevention also is from your yoga therapy non communicable diseases is a wonderful therapy through yoga therapy and the bones and joints disorder primarily is your osteoarthritis and all the you know pain related to arthritis and degenerative diseases primarily degenerative neurological disorders like parkinson disease like uh, multiple sclerosis 
where they primarily a balance is lost and we bring the balance back and we see that uh, it is coming back slowly and slowly. Yoga therapy is also your anti-aging and we describe aging as a auto intoxication of our five senses. We have five senses. We see, we see, we hear, we smell, we taste and touch. And when we intoxicate our body with these five senses, that is our aging process. Anti-aging is consciously controlling your five sense with a proper physical, mental and spiritual wellness. Now, what is a breath-based asana? A, a breath needs to be very effortless and relaxed. And it only happens when your physical body is relaxed. So, a person who's going to start yoga therapy first, the people like us who have been doing it, we can sit down in the ground, or people who can first start it, you can sit down in a chair. You can start sitting in a chair. I have a chair in the back, and I'll show you how to do the asanas. In the morning, in the morning, what you have? In the morning, your body is a little tight. Uh, sorry, this thing happens, you know, uh, technological problem. So, <clears throat> okay. Mm. I don't know how to stop this. Uh, anyway, we'll progress. So, we're talking about how to uh, start. You get into asana, people like us who can sit down in the ground. This is called a sukhasan. Sukhasan is easy. Or you can get into a chair. And I have a chair in the back. We we'll start in the chair. So, the first, what you do in the morning, when in the morning, your body is a little tight. You might do a little few breathing practices to relax your body. Then you start doing your asana. You do a set of asanas and along with your breath, then you practice a pranayama. A set of pranayama, generally we do about six to seven pranayamas daily and a set of asanas with your breath, breath-based asanas. And I'll show you the technique slowly, one step at a time how you see the change is taking place. First, our psychiatrists or psychiatrists have used the breath to cause a altered sense of consciousness. A altered sense of consciousness creates a tremendous physiological changes. Remember, the asanas are also causes a lot of physiological changes and which causes a healing process. But primary healing process is through your pranayama. And the pranayama, what is going to do, is you're going to quiet down your mind. Mind is like a software, body is like a hardware, and the software is fixed, hardware is fixed. The psychiatrist use is called a holographic breathing, and a holotrophic breathing. Holographic breathing is very relaxing. So the best way to do, let me show you, you know, I can sit down in the ground or in a chair. Let me get into a chair and show it to you what is the technique. Or maybe I sit down here, show it to you, you will look at it, then you sit in a chair and do it. In a holographic breathing, what you do, you close your mouth and put your tongue 
at the roof of your mouth. Now keep your mouth closed. Then when you breathe in, during breathe in, you'll open your mouth, like open your jaw without opening your mouth. And when you breathe out, you close your jaw without opening your mouth, like this. Powerful relaxing technique. In fact, I already have some saliva in my mouth. When you have saliva in your mouth, that tells you that we're having some parasympathetic activation and a relaxation response. It's a wonderful practice. So you can sit down in a chair. I can do it. This is called your holographic breathing. In a holotrophic breathing, you do a rapid breathing by which you create a hyperventilation syndrome. When you create a hyperventilation syndrome, then you develop a cerebral vasoconstriction. That means blood vessel going to the brain starts to shrink, constrict, and you develop a altered sense of consciousness. The first, it will be rapid abdominal breathing okay one thing one thing always remember that for a man it is primarily when they do a subconscious breathing is primarily a abdominal breathing followed by thoracic breathing chest in a woman it is a primarily thoracic breathing followed by abdominal breathing and for the babies it is primarily a abdominal breathing so the way it should be, like you put your hand in an Adhi Mudra or called Balo Mushti Mudra, you say, baby fist, you put it over here. Always try to do it with your eyes closed, focusing in between your eyebrows and the third eye, and there will be very rapid abdominal breathing, like this. Followed by nice, quiet exhalation, longer than inhalation. If you're practicing with me, you can practice. Let's do one more time. Rapid abdominal breathing, followed by a quiet breathing, exhalation longer than inhalation.
slow, deep breathing. You will feel in a short time you have a hyperventilation syndrome. You have a altered sense of consciousness. You may be seeing your whole head is spinning around you. You also have a maybe needle and prick sensation in your body. Also you'll have a, some circumoral numbness, the numbness around your mouth and face, carpopedal spasm, like a tightness in your hand and feet, which is entirely normal. So don't get very surprised when you develop this hyperventilation syndrome. Now, the most important thing here is that you are going to do a little bit of altered sense of consciousness so that your asana practice gets better. Another is called a neck rotation. What well, the neck rotation does, there are two blood vessels here called vertebral artery. This vertebral artery goes through the foramina of the cervical vertebra and supplies the lower part of the brain, which is called a cerebellum. So when you do a little rapid neck rotation, you also develop is a profound altered level of consciousness. In fact, what I have seen in uh, some third world countries, a person who is a dentist is going to pull out the teeth. So they do, they do the keep, keep, keep on rotating neck, keep on rotating neck, very rapid rotation of the neck. When you do a rapid rotation of the neck, please don't do it in a standing up. You do it in sitting down, a rapid rotation of the neck, very rapid rotation. It causes the altered sense of consciousness. It's amazing practice. If you're doing with me, sit down in a chair or sit down in the underground, keep doing it and you will see. Always remember, do not go cross the limit of your pain and keep your breathing effortless. You're not going to have any time. I'm already I'm already dizzy. I'm really looking. It's just a, almost like a blackout uh, spell in front of me. It is a it is an amazing experience when you develop. And medical term is called the vertebrobasilar insufficiency. Vertebro means vertebral artery. This is the artery which carries the blood. Basilar means basilar part of your brain, which is your your cerebellum. There is something called pons, part of the brain, and the blood supply there is restricted. So you get the sensation. Next, what you do, you try to sit down in a comfortable position. So the way we do it, when you're sitting in the ground, we first sit down in a called the easy pose, Sukhasana. You take both the feet, you cross it in the middle, and you know, it's going to drop down can drop down very comfortably. So if it doesn't drop down, if it stays here, let it be here. Don't push yourself. If you push yourself, it is going to come back higher. Be sure there is no pain. And be sure your, your breathing is effortless. You have to have effortless breathing because this is called a body shift to the breath shift in yoga called Annamaya kosha to pranamaya kosha. That means any imbalance you create in your physical body, it shows up in your breath. So slowly and slowly, you will see this thing is going to happen when you incorporate your breath. Incorporate your breath with a mudra, hand mudra. If you're practicing with me, 
touch your index finger and thumb. This is called a Dhyanu Mudra and a Gyanu Mudra, Meditation Mudra. Put it gently over your both the knees. Next is what keeps you very tight, awake and alert is your five senses. So most important five senses is your vision. Remember the eye, eye is the extension of your brain. The behind the eye there is a huge big nerve which is called the optic nerve which goes directly into your brain. And also I is supplied by another four cranial nerves. We used to call SO4 LR6. There's a muscle called superior oblique muscle supplied by the fourth cranial nerve. LR6 lateral rectus muscle supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. So the eye is basically a portion of the brain which is outside our skull. Brain is inside our skull, eyes outside our skull. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just practice with me. Sit down, you will see a profound level of changes will happen and you will develop a, a completely disease-free, medication-free, a quality life and living. Lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. 1.5 liter is called residual volume, which is there to keep the lung open. You have a 4.5 liter, which you can exchange, which is called vital capacity. Normally we only breathe 0.5 liter, which is called tidal volume. So you have a three liters of air, which is called inspiratory reserve. So inspiratory reserve is three and 0.5 liter is tidal volume is called inspiratory capacity. That means you can breathe in. If you are trying and trying and trying about 3.5 liter, you will be able to breathe in. Expiratory reserve is about one liter. The expiratory reserve capacity is called your 1.5 liter. And most important breathing, what really helps us in really healing, called FEV1, forced expiratory volume in one second. That means, so lung is like a balloon. So first of all, you need to do, you need to breathe out first. Empty your lung, slowly take a deep breath in, and breathe out longer than breathing in. There's a typical breath-based asana, which is going to slowly and slowly start relaxing your body and mind. If you're practicing with me, let's try. It's very simply, so do a count of two in, one and two, second in, and count of four out. One and two and a three, and a four out, as simple as it is. Let's try. Let me do a count of two seconds in and four seconds out. Let's keep progressing. And you progress according to your capability like you will feel that when you're doing effortless breathing that you will be able to talk you will be able to sing there will be no effect in your body and mind very very important concept you have to remember that so let me show it to you how to do it just do it count of four in and count of eight out
If you don't do it, you get carried away like I got carried away, I did twice. A very beautiful way. So let me show you how you know, I can do it. If you can do it, it's fine. But if not, stay where you are and keep breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Let me show you to count of six in, count of 12 out. The best way to do it, first breathe out first, long exhalation. Count of six in. Wonderful practice. Let me show you count of eight in, like eight second in and 16 second out. So breathe out first. Let me start again. What it does, it reduces your respiratory rate and also increases your tidal volume. So for example, in a normal subconscious breathing, remember the breathing is both conscious and subconscious. So this is one thing, I'm sleeping, I'm breathing. That's a function of my brainstem. My brainstem is functioning and that is called our subconscious mind. I'm awake. I can do a long inhalation and long exhalation. This is a conscious breathing, which is a function of my cortex, upper part of my brain. So breath connects between my unconscious and conscious mind. Wonderful experience. So, Normally we breathe about 15 to 16 breaths per minute. And normally when you can do, when you can do two second in and four second out, we say six second a cycle. You have already reduced the breathing rate to 10. Slower the breathing rate, longer your longevity. Extend your exhalation Extend your longevity. So now, so for us, we can even do 10 seconds in, 20 seconds out with the practice. Why? Because the muscles of respiration is all the muscle, pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, you know, the, all the, the muscles of respiration are called skeletal muscles and they can be trained. You can be trained. So if you get a 10 second in and 20 second out, it's a 30 seconds. The breathing rate drops down to almost two per minute. It's a wonderful practice. Now what you do, you change your feet also with your breathing. Now I'm just crossing, putting my other feet. What it does, it activates the opposite side of the, your brain. And it brings your relaxation, slowly and slowly, it brings your relaxation in your body and mind. And it goes in steps. Next breathing, which helps with your asanas, is your bumblebee breathing, Brahmri Pranayama. 
and your bumblebee breathing, what you do, you shut down your five senses. You close your five senses and you create a vibration. That vibration has the same vibration as your brain. Two vibration interacts, it cancels, called a harmonic resonance, and mind quiets down and body enters into a profound relaxation. So let's try to bumblebee breathing. Then what we do, we'll incorporate the bumblebee breathing, just the frequency along with our asana practice. And we'll go in steps. If you're sitting in a chair, you'll be able to do all of them sitting in a chair. So you can do it. So let's do first two bumblebee breathing called Brahmvi Pranayama. <laughs> Put your index finger on your forehead, three fingers to close your eyes, thumb to close your ear and close your mouth. You breathe out first through your nostril, breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your nose with the sound of a bumblebee. Then use a pumping and cupping to relax your eyes. Keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, then use the hand as a cup. Put it over your eyes. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. And once you feel the relaxation, then massage your forehead, massage your eyes, really massage your ear, massage behind your ear, Massage in front of your ear, massage the tragus, the small, the small part in front of your ear, tragus. Massage the inner, ex, you know, external ear canal inside your ear. This is called the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a branch called auricular branch. It stimulates the vagus nerve. Then we'll incorporate this breathing during our breathing technique. So from here, if you can see me a little bit more better, that I can put my one foot on the top. This is my, your half lotus, Ardha Padmasana, or is also called a Swastika Asana. More and more you'll be able to relax your larger and larger muscle groups you will see your breathing becomes more and more quieter and deeper. So you have to learn how to relax large number of muscle groups and you will be noticing it. This is really the introspection looking inside you. Yoga practice basically is for you to do the practices and look at the effect in your body and mind. So I'm very comfortable sitting in this posture and also in this posture if you notice it I'll put my fingers in, I'll separate my toes when I'm sitting down, I will rotate my ankle, relax my ankle. These are the things going on, I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm singing, completely effortless. And 
Next, what we'll do, you will see the effect of breathing on your asanas and how the breath based asana helps you. Now I'm going to the next step. This is the your Ardha Padmasana in the other side. So I'm doing both sides equally and I'm gradually and gradually coming in stages. If you're sitting in a chair, you can just slowly bring your feet up and keep doing this same thing without any pain or either any effort in your breathing. Now, now I can take my other foot and bring it up and sit down in a lotus, lotus pose. So here I'm sitting in a lotus pose. If I'm sitting in a long enough time with my breath based, breath means here, my hand mudras, this is another very nice mudra. This is called the Adhi Mudra or a Balo Mushti Mudra. That means baby fist. This is a baby takes the fist. It relaxes. It relaxes the baby. So put in here, you are doing your breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in. And if you look at it, a large number, a group of muscles is getting relaxed in the lower part of your body. Now, if you can practice with me, if you cannot do it, just do with your, you know, a sitting posture. If you can do an easy pose, Sukhasana, or a perfect pose, Siddhasana, even if you sit in a chair, it's fine. Then the next is that when you're able to sit down for a longer time, that the muscle cannot stay contracted too long. At the beginning, though the muscle contracts, then slowly and slowly muscle starts to relax. Before it relaxes, it causes a little fasciculation and you feel the muscles are getting a little bit of a twitching and then slowly and slowly get into profound relaxation. When the muscle gets profound relaxation, you can feel your body becomes almost like a fluid. But what it affects your breath, and I'll show you more when I'm standing up, doing the standing up poses to you and showing it to you, how the breath affects your asanas and how to your, do the asanas with your proper breathing. Your mudra, your mudra is a, a, a asana which, which causes profound relaxation of the large number of muscles, a big group of muscles. So here I'm holding my left hand to the back. I'm looking straight so that I keep my spine straight. I'm breathing out first. Take a deep breath in, slowly breathing out and put my body down. Slowly put my body down as far as it goes down. Let me go to the back so you see it. Here I go. Only thing I look for, I look for your pain. There is no pain. They look for my breathing, my effortless breathing. My breathing is effortless, I have no pain, I keep on coming down. Once I can come down, I stay in this posture. I stay here between five to 10 breaths. Again, breathing out longer than breathing in.
And when slowly you get up, now you notice that your breath you're able to breathe in about maybe two, three, four times and more than what is a normal breathing and you'll be able to breathe out. Try this, you know, breathe out first. Deep breath in. Very, very important asana and important breathing technique. Relax your large group of muscles and you will feel the effect of it. In the same way when you are going to breathe or you are going to your relax your body upper part and lower part of the body. So lower part of the body you put your feet in front hands on the sides this is called your Dandasana, stuff pose. Relax your toes, separate your toes with the breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Separate your toes, very important. Just your toes, breathe in and breathe out. With your breath, breath-based asanas. Breathe in, breathe out. Ankle, I said breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. More and more you do your breathing, better and better your relaxation will set in and better and better your parasympathetic activation will set. Rotate with your breathing. Breathe out first, breathe in, and slowly rotate your feet. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. In. Opposite side. Same way you can do your very large group of muscles. You do seated forward bend. Paschim Uttanasana. So hand high up. Always remember one thing I forgot. One thing always remember you breathe in when muscle is relax you breathe out when the muscle is contracting because muscle needs oxygen so so think about the biceps biceps will need oxygen when biceps is working so when is biceps is working you are doing say 10 pounds or 15 pounds so here you will breathe in and here we'll breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. So once you keep this in your back of your mind, you will never forget when to breathe in, when to breathe out. So in a seated forward bend, all the muscle is going to work when I'm trying to come down. But always remember, in a yoga therapy, this is not an exercise. Exercise is the same asanas you can do in a rapid sequence and it becomes an exercise. This, you have to hold the pose for a long period of time. How long? At least five to 10 breaths. So take your hands, raise it up, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, get all the oxygen here, 
and slowly breathe out and come down. Whatever you can come down. If you can come down, if you can hold your toes, it is great. We have been doing it for some time without breathing and then slowly you can drop your head down. When your head starts to come down, you'll see your body, your knees can remain straight, your hand can come, you can even clasp your hand and put your hand around your feet. The knees are still straight. Drop your head down. Keep doing your breathing and be sure there is no pain. There is no pain in effortless breathing. These are all breath based asanas. You get up, get up slowly. And now to you check your breath. You can breathe in and breathe out about three or four times more than what you can do in a normal breathing. Why? Because you have relaxed a large number of big muscles, big muscles groups you have relaxed. In the same way, when you do, when you do your, say, you want to relax your knees and hips, you bring your feet up, put your feet high up here, and then separate your toes. The best way to separate your toes, use your hand, use your fingers, and to put in between your toes. So this is very important. The moment you can start relaxing your toes, your whole feet gets relaxed. You know, feet has an arch. When you maintain your arch and you separate your toes in the front, feet gets relaxed. So what I do, I do from even here, if you can watch me here, and I also do from this side. I put my fingers here from this side. Both sides, I separate the toes. Separation of the toes is one of the very, very important yoga therapy practices. It relieves your pain, it relieves your pain from plantar fasciitis, it's from your bunion, hammer toes, you can name it in all the feet problem. And when the feet is comfortable, your whole body is comfortable. Remember, all my body weight get taken care of by my feet, my knees and my hips to just transfer my weight. So I will take my knee joint high up, I'll breathe out first. I'll take a deep breath in and slowly drop my knee down. And knee comes down on its own. If it doesn't come down on its own, if it stays here, let it be here. Because what happens if you push it down, it's going to come back high up. So you stay here, do your breathing, breathing out, longer than breathing in. Have your eyes closed, continue your breathing, 
and slowly and slowly this thing is going to happen and this thing is going to happen for you even without knowing what happens in a breathing the breath takes over the breath takes over your physical consciousness so what happens your mind is totally working for your breath not the body movement so it's amazing amazing phenomenon amazing concept so even do it breathe in breathe out breathe in Always balance it, do it in the opposite side. Again, separate your toes. I'm using my hand fingers to separate my toes. Take my knee all the way high up. I'm hugging it. I'm seeing how nice I'm, I'm hugging it. I'm breathing out first. Take a deep breath in. Slowly drop the knee down and the knee is going, going to go down on its own. I don't have to do anything. So when it goes down on its own and it stays here. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's a wonderful practice. If you practice it, you practice it daily with your breathing, these breath-based asanas will bring profound level of relaxation and this will create a total global effect of yogic healing. Remember the healing. Healing is called restoration of homeostasis. Our body has a homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis is default mode network, reset button, factory reset. The day we are born, we did not have any disease. This is in Sanskrit is called Ashok. This is the day we are born, we did not have any disease. All the disease we have, which are called endogenous disease, non-communicable disease, are all created by me. I am the cause and I am the cure. And how I am the cure? I'm the cure with my introspection by looking inside myself and restoration of homeostasis. Same the lower part of the breathing, you will see that you will be doing a Baddhakonasana, closed angle pose. So put your feet together and slowly bring the feet close to you. Clasp your hand, put it underneath and keep your spine straight. Now, you will see the difference now and you will be able to do the introspection. For me, my knees are a little bit above the ground. So what I'm going to do, I'm closing my eyes and I'm going to do the breathing. Effortless breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in.
Slowly you can do a little bit of a moving. This is called a butterfly, titliyasan. When you do a very gentle butterfly and with your breathing, I'm almost, I'm touching the ground now. For the yoga teachers or long-term yoga practitioners, let me show you another technique, a breathing technique, which will be very effective when you're doing it. This is your abdominal lock, Udhyani band, or you call it a Bajjo Pranayam. Breath holding in exhalation. When you do breath holding in exhalation, you will see your feet is going to come down, your knees are going to come down slowly and slowly will touch the ground. The way to do it, you're sitting here with both the knees touching the ground or even not keep your spine straight underneath. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. Let's do it again. I want to show you that you do your Bajjo Pranayam or your abdominal lock with this your butterfly pose. And you will see your butterfly is going to come down slowly and slowly. You might develop some tightness. There is the muscles in the feet. There are two sides which are along the, your the arch, the arch of the feet. These are the muscles and there is a fibrous tissue called plantar fascia. When you're doing it, you can get a little tightness. See, within a short time with my breathing and you can see my both my knees are touching the ground. So my spine is straight. Again, let me show you sitting here how to do a abdominal lock with a proper asana technique. This is also breath based. This is a breath holding in exhalation, which is called suspension. So breathe out first. Take a deep, long breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. Another technique in a breath based asana is when you can do it like this, what you will be able to do, you will be able to do a Agni Sar Kriya. Agni Sar Kriya is the moving, moving your abdominal wall back and forth with holding your breath. You see, I'm so comfortable now, I'm so relaxed, I'm putting both my knees down into the ground and this only happens when the asanas 
are breath based. If you do this thing, if you do it very high, no, very way high up and down, high and down, and this is one asana which will help you for regaining your function of your hip joints. I have people who are scheduled for a hip joint replacement. And with this asana, you were comfortable, less pain, and able to even to cancel their hip joint replacement. So let me show you the movement of the abdominal wall with this asana. Again, like any yoga practice, you breathe out first. You will be completely breathe out. You will suck the stomach in and move the stomach back and forth. to sit <coughs> abdominal wall will move front and back Baddhakonasan with you Agdisar Kriya Same asana, <coughs> same asana you can do laying down which will help you in your sleep but you will use the breathing breath based a two or three different technique abdominal breathing and longer exhalation and the breath holding. Since we're in the same asana, let me show it to you how you will be able to do that. Same asana, the name is called Bodhakonasana, close angle pose, and when you lay down, it's called Supto Bodhakonasana. Supto means sleep, Bodhakonasana means same asana. We move this chair a little bit. Put your feet in front first. This is your Dandasan. From the Dandasan, you can go slowly. To your laying down.
relax a little bit, then bring, put your both the feet together, bring it slowly close to you, and drop both the knees down your ground as far as you can. This is the Sanskrit name, is the Sutta Bodhakurasana. And again, many a time, you might feel it uncomfortable. When you feel it uncomfortable, then you can do, you can do a restorative or supportive your closed angle pose. Let me show it to you here. I have these two small pillows which you'll be able to use it. Remember one thing, always, always do a yoga asana practice as if the asana is your normal body movement and asana is like your sabhasana. So in a restorative Sutta Bodha Konasana, you will see very important this breath based asana because this is going to help you fall asleep. Because now basically what you're doing is sleeping like a baby. Take this to a spot and just put it under totally supported Sutta Bodho Konasana. First what you do Keep your hand outside, about six inches outside, with the palm facing high up. And the first breath you incorporate is your abdominal breathing. You will see that's the way the baby sleeps. So the way the abdominal breathing is, if you put your hand in the belly button, when you breathe in, the stomach wall will rise. Breathe out, stomach wall will slowly go in. Breathe in. So if you're doing with me, let's do about 10 of this breathing. 10 abdominal breathing, completely effortless. But if you cannot do without effortless, but do as much as you can do without any effort. Put your hands on both sides, palm facing high up. Now you incorporate a breath, breathing out longer than breathing in. Generally do five to 10 breaths of this. Just to, just to show you five breaths, 
count of four in and count of eight out. Breathe out first. Count of four in, one and two and the three and the four in. Count of eight out. For me, this is very easy. So let me progress to count of five in and count of 10 out. And I'll do another four breathing like this for This is a powerful breath-based asana. Now you incorporate a breath holding. The way to do it, on one is to four is to two. You breathe in with a count of four in, hold for a count of 16, and breathe out with a count of eight. You can increase it, then you can do breathe in with a count of five in, Hold for 20, breathe out for 10. You can do 6 in, 24 hold, 12 out. But be sure they're all completely effortless. The moment you make an effort in breathing is no longer a therapeutic yoga. Breathe out first, breathe in with a count of 4 in. Hold for a count of 16. Breathe out with a count of 8 out. Now let's progress slowly. Let's do count of breathe in with a count of five in. Hold for count of 20. Breathe out with a count of 10 out. You can progress one more time. You do about five or 10 of this, whatever comfortable. Let me show it to you. Count of six in, 24 hold, 12 out.
I'll go six in. I'll go twenty four hold. Count of twelve out. Wonderful bread based asana. By this time, you will fall asleep, and this will be more than any of the sleeping pills you have in your market. Then you slowly turn on your right side. You can put your hand, head under a folded hand. Or if you need a pillow, you can again use a very small pillow. Put your head on a small pillow. Put your hands in between it, like a fetal position. You stay here at the beginning on the right side because you have a left nostril opens up. When the left nostril opens up, get a cooling breathing. Inside body core temperature starts to come down. And finally, you sleep on your left side, on the other side. If I can show it to you from your, showing it to you, you'll be sleeping like this. This is your breath-based asana for insomnia and a sleep apnea. So sleeping on the left side in a fiddle position, a hand is in between the knees. Sleep this way, you'll see how the breathing, and also in this position, you can do your breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. When you get up, you straighten up your leg first, put your hand a little pressure, and slowly get up very easily and comfortably. Whole body get relaxed with your squatting pose. And you can use the squatting pose also with your breathing. When you see the squatting pose with your breathing, your whole body will get relaxed. Also, you do your whole upper body, opening the chest, neck movement with your bumblebee breathing, call your Brahmri Pranaya. So let me show it to you that one first. So get the upper part of the body, then your, the whole body will relax with a squatting pose. The way to do it, the way to open up the whole upper part, remember one thing, your hand gets relaxed when you separate your fingers. When you separate your fingers, hands get relaxed. Tightness of the hands causes pain and causes tightness. You have to put your hand completely separated and relax. The wrist gets relaxed with your extension. You know, the flexion and the extension. Elbow gets relaxed with your internal rotation. It gets tightens up with the external rotation. Shoulder gets relaxed more on adduction, like bringing the shoulder close to your hand, and internal rotation, turning the hand inwards. The shoulder causes pain on more on the external rotation of the shoulder, and also in abduction, raising the hand higher. 
So all of them you take care, which called prayer pose to the back. If you put your hands to the back in a prayer pose, you slowly and slowly, you relax to the whole upper part of the body. So here you sit down. Slowly bring your hands close to you. Then turn your hand around as a prayer pose. And start where you are. You don't have to push yourself. Start where you are and slowly keep doing your breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. And you will see longer and longer you do, it will get better and better. Your hands will just slowly and slowly keep going high up. Longer and longer you stay, more and more relaxation will take place. So with that, you can do in a chair also, the prayer pose to the back. And then you are putting your hands to the back as a prayer pose to the back. Then we'll be moving your neck, the neck rotation. You'll do the four neck postures. with the sound of a bumblebee. So how to do that? Let's be a little bit more comfortable here. Keep your spine straight. I can feel my hand is still going up slowly and slowly. Breathe out first. With the breathing in, Slowly drop your head to the back. When you breathe out, you breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. Mm. This also helps you in extending your exhalation. This is your breath-based asana. This is going to relax your whole upper body. In fact, it will relax your whole body, whole body and mind. It's a wonderful practice. Prayer pose to the back. And the neck rotation, the Sanskrit name is called Brahma Mudra. It is a four posture, front and back, side to side, looking all the way to the back and slowly turning your neck without any pain, without any effort in your breathing. Let's do it all the four posture positions. I'll do it only one time, but at your home in practice, you can do it more and more. Five to 10 is very good. I know that. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. Mm.
rotation from the left to the back to the right and right to the back to the left. Drop your head down first. See my hand is still going high up more and more because I'm getting relaxed. This is a deep therapy for your cervical and dorsal radiculopathy. Radiculopathy means the nerve root pain. When you get the cervical disc herniation, cervical stenosis or cervical spondylysis, the pain, the pain is unbearable. In fact, the, we have seen all the people, they even never use their hand in a sling. They use a very powerful dose of steroid to reduce the swelling, reduce the inflammation around the nerve root. But when you do this, prayer pose to the back with a four posterior neck called Brahma Mudra with your bumblebee breathing. The squatting pose with a breath-based squatting pose is very important. That's what we do first thing in the morning. When I get up in the morning, I will sit down in the squatting pose. In a squatting pose, it relaxes. It relaxes your feet, relaxes your ankle, relaxes your knee, relaxes your hips, relaxes your back. Put your hands, separate your finger, relaxes your hand, extend your wrist, put your one elbow inside, put your other elbow inside, put your hands, bring your hands slowly and slowly, close to you, Keep your spine straight, look straight, and then in this posture, you do your bumblebee breathing. Close your eyes, just to do through your nostril. Like breathe out first. Mm. You feel so relaxed, so good, and you slowly get up without any help. 
there is a pog. Very important practice. In a standing up, <clears throat> what you do in a breathing, and again, remember your introspection, you will know exactly what is going on. Your ear, your shoulder, your hip, and in the ankle, in the same line. That is called your stick, dandasana, or your mountain pose. Very, very important asana. And always close your eyes and do your breathing. Same thing. When you're balancing posture, you put both the feet together, put your hands to the back as a prayer pose. Because hands, you know, take out the balancing. Stand on your non-dominant foot, like left foot. Close your eyes and do your breathing. So what it does when you do your breathing, it quiets down your mind and you'll be able to stand with your eyes closed with your one foot. Still very difficult and it becomes more and more difficult when your mind is not quiet. You can incorporate a lot of breathing. Let me show another technique. You can try it and you will see the difference. You can do a, say, tree pose with the hands to the back. You'll be surprised what happens to you when you do a tree pose, precaution, with your hands in front like this or hands raising high up like this and putting your hands to the back. Try to do it, you'll see the difference. And then you will incorporate. Normally you are always doing your breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in. Every asana you do in as a therapeutic yoga will be no pain and effortless breathing Exhalation longer than inhalation. So let me show you a little different technique with the breath-based asana. You can also concentrate. Remember, you do not do pranayama standing up because in pranayama causes little altered sense of consciousness. You really don't want that altered sense of consciousness in standing up. But you can do a very slow Kapalbhati Pranayama. Let me show it to you. You can do your tree pose. Here you are doing your tree pose. And put your hands to the back. Tree pose. Hands to the back. Now you are doing your very slow Kapalbhati Pranayama. Just trying to show you that how you can incorporate a we call it a most difficult asanas balancing asanas with your breath based even pranayama Then you try doing it with your eyes closed. With your eyes closed, with your tree pose, hands to the back in the prayer pose, and you drink Kapal Vati Pranayama.
These are the practices which slowly and slowly will come to you. These are called introspection, introspective practice. Now again, the one which I was telling you more and more, that when you learn how to do the relaxation of the bigger muscles, your breathing becomes a lot more deeper and deeper. So example being, is called your standing forward bend. Uttan Asan. And you see, when I'm in the Uttan Asan, when I'm stay there for a little longer time, and when I get out of the Uttan Asan, my breathing will be a lot more effortless, and my breathing will be a lot deeper. And that's the way your breath becomes deeper and deeper. How do you know your breath becomes deeper and deeper? Your exhalation gets longer. Like if you do a, say, Om Chanti, when you breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and do the Om Chanting, that Om sound will be a lot longer and longer and longer. It can start from maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, maybe about 30 seconds, maybe about a minute of exhalation. So here I am, I'm going to start a standing forward bend. Hands high up, slowly hands will come down. Hands first come down, it comes down in front of my body. When it comes in front of my body, I'm comfortable. I don't have any pain, I'm having effortless breathing, and I can feel all the larger muscles back muscles, gluteal muscles, all the muscles are slowly and slowly almost like started to melt down. Then get your hands on both sides, your knees are still straight, and slowly bring your head towards your knee. Head is coming towards your knee. A certain point, if you feel that you still have a little bit more space left, you can put your hands in the back and bring your head and touch your head to the knee and stay in this posture. Continue your breathing and keep your eyes closed. Then when you slowly get up, you will see, take a deep breath in, the breathing gets a lot deeper and deeper and deeper. Now I can breathe in, breathe out. Let me show you a sit up, <clears throat> which with your breathing, and this sit up with your breathing, it is called a sit up, is the name called Hanuman Baitak. Hanuman Baitak means it's a sit up for the name of for the Hanuman. Hanuman was one of the very famous yoga teachers. For us, this is called our permanent knee and hip joint replacement. So slowly what you will do, you'll slowly come down, you'll go all the way down to one side and get up with your breathing. 
okay so hands you know breathe out first take a deep breath in and slowly come down get all the way down to the foot and breathe out you slowly get up with your breathing breathe in breathe out slowly come down come all the way down on your feet and slowly get up. Hanuman Baitak with your breathing. You won't need any knee joint replacement or hip joint replacement. Same thing will happen when you're able to put your head down below your heart. When you're able to put your head down below your heart, your intracranial pressure goes high up, pressure inside your brain. Intraocular pressure goes high up, pressure inside your eyes. Intracarotid pressure goes high up, pressure inside your carotid artery goes high up. You feel miserable, you feel that you are very uncomfortable. But if you keep your head down, our body's homeostatic mechanism comes in. That means your intracranial pressure slowly and slowly will come down intraocular pressure like pressure inside the eye slowly will come down intracarotid pressure will come down and will feel that your flushing of the face goes away your breathing becomes totally effortless you are completely relaxed to the point that you will be able to even do a Kapalbhati Pranayama on your, the Sanskrit name is called Prasharito Uttan Asan. That means your wide spread forward bend. So if you keep doing it, if you keep separating your <coughs> body, you have a mat here, if you can if you can separate up to your mat, keep on practicing, you'll be able to do a split of Hanumanasana. Then slowly put your head down and you do it in stages because initially you may have a little bit of a effort in breathing, but at any posture where you are comfortable You stay here. Same thing, when you're staying here, put your hands, see how far you can spread your feet. Your feet is now to the width of your mat. Slowly put your head down. Keep doing your breathing. Breathing out, <coughs> breathing out. <coughs> Sorry. Breathing out longer than breathing in. When you're comfortable in this posture, you don't have any effect in your breathing. You don't have any effect on your face, there is no flushing, no watering. You can do a Kapal Bhati Pranayama in this posture.
See how wonderful are these breath-based asanas. And these are the practices who will take you. So what it did, it in increased my called baroreceptor sensitivity. Baroreceptor is a receptor in my blood vessels which is controlling my blood pressure. If my blood pressure goes high up, baroreceptor lowers it down. Blood pressure goes down, baroreceptor raises it up. So when we take the medications like a beta blocker, ACE inhibitor, these practices almost acts like your beta blocker, ACE inhibitor, it prevents, prevents sudden change in your heart rate and sudden change in your blood pressure. People with cardiovascular disorders takes aspirin, statin, beta blocker and ACE inhibitor. And also one thing you always remember, the people who are doing this yoga practices for a long time, this practice becomes part of their body. It becomes part of the daily practice. It becomes part of their normal physiological process. So people always ask me, can I do this? when I have this, can I do this when I have this, can I do this when I have this? Yes, you will be able to do everything in stages. What are the stages? First stage is awaken the doctor within you. You have a doctor within you, awaken the doctor, that is an introspection and see what your doctor is telling you. Doctor is telling you that your breath is not effortless. Don't progress anymore. So don't progress. Breath has to be totally effortless to progress. You are having little pain in this posture. You back off. Your doctor within is telling you. Listen to your doctor within you. But when you have mastered all the basic asanas, basic pranayamas. When you are able to do most of the asanas completely effortlessly, you are not going to have any problem when you have even an underlying medical condition. Example being, I had an ophthalmologist friend who had a glaucoma, increasing pressure inside the eyes, tried all the medication not helping. So what I suggested him, why don't you just keep your head down slowly for a very short time and also do the supported, supported putting your head down like what I showed it to him that you stand up I said slowly put your head down put your head down support your head and stay here and then follow your symptoms if you have any discomfort you back off so he started doing it slowly and slowly and essentially, we find out that with a regular practice, his pressure inside the eye was going down. Pressure inside the eye was slowly getting normal and normal. What a wonderful practice. And he was an ophthalmologist and now he's a regular yoga practitioner. Finally, in the same context, we all talk about it. Everybody wants to do a headstand. Headstand is a very nice, beautiful asana. By the time you can do a headstand, your all the your baroreceptor sensitivity goes down, chemoreceptor sensitivity goes high up, 
you have your all the uh, heart rate variability goes down you get a parasympathetic activation you get a lot of other things you know it, it acts like you get a you know it's like a apoptosis you know there is a huge number of physiological changes takes place but like here I'm sitting in a pure thunderbolt Vajrasana I feel very relaxed this is the one you keep your spine straight head down this is my stance I put my hand down I put my head down I feel miserable I cannot talk I cannot breathe <laughs> my face is flushed my eyes are watering <coughs> so slowly I stay here for a while and I get up once my breathing is comfortable go down again put my head down then I listen to my breath. It might take a few days to a few weeks to a few months. When your breath gets relaxed, what you do, when you're comfortable, you keep walking. When you keep walking, your body is going to go high up. Body is going to go high up. It is slowly and slowly back, and then you come down. That's okay. One more time, see what happens. Your body is going to go high up. And you concentrate. More and more you concentrate, your body is going to go high up. I'm breathing, I'm comfortable, and this is called a breath-based asana. When your breathing is effortless, and you can do a headstand, you can do a shoulder stand, and again, I do it every day, and I do it very comfortably, I do it very quietly on my own personal practice. Wonderful way to be healthy, to be disease free, and all these practices will make you do. Let you take care of your reduction in your pharmaceutical support, your medication support, whatever medication you are taking for your diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, it's going to go down. Reduction in the pharmaceutical support, better quality of life. It's not that how long you live, it's the quality of life you maintain. We don't need to live extended period of time, but we do, all the yogis lives. I'll tell you example after example. All the four yogis which you know in the modern time, Iyengar lived up to 96. Indira Devi, the first Western woman trained in yoga from India, from Krishnamacharya. She lived up to 102. Patabai Joyce lived up to 93, 94. But not even living that long, they enjoyed a good quality life. They were disease free, medication free, enjoyed a quality living. Thank you. This is the time has come. Going to finish it now and we'll come back again in next Saturday with another topic. And if you want any topic, be sure you make your comments. I will be I'm fulfilling a lot of requests these days. Okay, see you next Saturday.